Michigan man, John Runyon Jr. Clap it up. What up, Paul? What up, brother? What's going on? Good to see you guys. Good to, you guys. Good to see you, man. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, John. Catch that night. Uh, what'd you eat? Uh, I went there with my fiance, one of my buddies, and we pretty much ordered everything from every section of the menu. We, we had a we had a good night there. It was fantastic. And uh, hey. Yeah, I don't know. Pat Perez, I was with him. I don't know what he spent. That's just crazy. I got to ask you, like, we were talking about this. It's funny. We're in an inflated world. I mean, I don't know how people survive middle class buying groceries and shit and having families and shit. And I'm like, I'm looking at it myself like, God, it's, it must be rough. But there was, you couldn't get in the catch at a thousand a plate or whatever the hell they charge. Like, like, it ain't no damn, uh, we're not in no damn recession. Shit. I know. It's insane. And uh, I had dinner reservations somewhere else that night, and I bumped into a former teammate, and he's like, hey, I got two more seats open at catch if you want to – we can go together. And I was like, yeah, that sounds awesome. Of course, we, we were staying at Ari as well and uh, in uh, there in Vegas, and I bumped into you, and uh, it was funny because uh, you did a cameo for me and my buddies. Uh, we had a little fantasy football league, and uh, they had you, you know, read off a – power rankings going into the playoffs and that was so funny that just we just got that a couple of weeks ago that I bumped into you and it was just kind of by coincidence and uh, it was it was funny me and you talking to you and chopping it up no doubt hey so you're, you're grinding right now you're working out ready to go you just left you you're now at New York Giant um out in the Big Apple is that a huge change I guess you went to college in Michigan Green Bay you got to play in some smaller areas now you're in the Big Apple uh we know it's going it's crazy there right now with all this other stuff going on but in the football world of things New York Giants are a big time name Super Bowl champ, many Super Bowls uh the Parcells era the the legendary guys that have gone through that organization are you happy to be there of course you know it's a it's a business um and are you ready to go grind and get this going I think the Giants are still on the on the on the rise as far as what they're doing in the off season I like their off season so far I I said they're a sleeper a lot of people were hating on them early. I'm like, man, the Giants have done a hell of a job, I think, uh, in free agency and in in trades. What do you where are you at with the Giants in, as an organization going there? Yeah, um, the whole thing. Uh, I'm originally from South Jersey. Uh, my dad played for the Eagles. We lived in South Jersey and kind of still live out in the area. So, um, you know, hour and a half away from New York, New Jersey. And so. Nice to get back home on the East Coast, but I spent four years in Green Bay. Got drafted by them. Uh, really loved it out there. Uh, you just kind of just grow accustomed to you know everything you got out there. It's real nice, small college town. Uh, it feels like a college town, but it's a pro sports town. There's really nothing else like in professional sports that's like Green Bay. So definitely gonna miss that. But you know, one of the biggest parts of the decision going into that was you know being close to home, being around family and friends, and that's why I kind of still live in the Philly area, and that's only an, uh, an hour and a half away from New York. So. Being able to do that, and uh, I really believe in you know kind of what Coach Dayball preaches, and going forward, and just his attitude and his mindset, and uh, we're just trying to get this thing back on track. And I do think they've had a really successful uh, free agency period off season. They are building something. They have, uh, I think, one of the best defensive lines in the NFL. It's really kind of scary what they got going going forward over there. And I'm happy to kind of build that on the offensive side and get this thing going. And um, yeah, just really excited to be up there and excited to get in there. We, I think we started in a little uh, less than a month. Mm, so I'll be man. This year has gone by so fast. It seems uh, like the draft's yeah. here. I'm like, damn, I just saw you at, at Super Bowl, and then now we're back at uh, back in the grind going towards another one, trying to get to another one for you. Let me ask you this. like, You're going to a new place. Do you prep? Just as you would a scouting report for a, for an opponent or for a D line and and a, and a three tech or a shade. I'm I'm prepping this guy. I know what he does. Are you prepping your off your 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 team that you're going to as well? Like, are you looking at Daniel Jones and saying, "All right, I got to prep how he works the pocket, manipulates the pocket. Does he take off here, and I got to know to turn back? Like, are there things that you do a deep dive into as far as where you go and have to have a new QB, a new system, and understand how I could better protect them? Yeah. Um, in regards to that, I haven't watched, like, a lot of film on the Giants or anything. I just got my iPad a couple days ago and, you know, starting to break it open. I was looking through the day one install, and – as of right now, no one really teaching me anything. So I go in there, it kind of just looks like a different language, even though 
you know, football is football, but everybody everywhere has their own words, own terminology, and you just got to kind of mix that into how you were taught and what you know. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm really familiar with the Giants. So we played them twice in my career, and I've always grew up a fan of the NFC East football, like uh, the Commanders, the Cowboys, the Eagles, the Giants, because that's kind of what I grew up on. So those, those are always teams that I'm attracted to watch. So, you know, I understand the kind of player Daniel Jones is. I mean, he had a phenomenal season back in 2022, and he looked like one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And uh, this past year, he's kind of up and down, um, just kind of from health-wise uh, aspect. And uh, I know they got – they let go or weren't able to hold on to Saquon and they got Devin Singletary in there. I think he's a phenomenal runner. i uh, excited to have him running behind me. So um, yeah, excited to see what they do in the draft as well. I think they hold the number six pick and that's a high value pick. So I mean, uh, I don't really under, I don't know where they're going to go with that, but I'm just, I know they're going to make the right decision because I, I know, you know, the management and the coaches are building this towards the future and it, it's going to be really exciting to see what they got going. No, for sure, man. I got a question for you, and, and pleasure me and you here as well, man. Talk yeah. about just the 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 transition of going from, and I know we kind of we talked about it a little bit up top, but just like dive into a little bit more. Is it difficult to transfer from, you know, not transfer, but to go from one city to another city, from one you know one team to another team in terms of just like the all the stuff that we don't know behind the scene, like hiring movers and getting, you know, what I'm saying this. I'm, I'm assuming you probably had a nice home or, or something, you know, in, in Green Bay and having to get all that stuff. Like talk about just the grind from behind the scenes that the everyday fan just don't know. Yeah. That's a great question. Honestly, I'm kind of like right in the middle of that. Um, didn't really know where I was going to end up. I never actually bought a home, uh, in Wisconsin. Okay. I was, I was renting, I was renting a house out there and I kind of had a feeling like I didn't, I didn't know if I would have signed a second contract there. Yeah. I would have bought a home out there, but yeah. luckily I was renting one and it's up kind of before June starts. And, uh, this past weekend, just, I just shot back up to New York uh, a couple of days after I signed and was able to tour some houses and we got an idea of some ones that we like. And now I'm going through the process of hiring a mover where it's going to time up that I can go out to Green Bay one of these weekends during OTAs, help pack up my house and hire them to drive them to Jersey. And uh, it's just, it's a lot. And hopefully closing on the house or whatever we're doing out there lines up where they can just take all the stuff here and they don't have to bring it to my house uh, outside Philly. So it's a lot going on. Try not to stress about it because I know, you know, we can take our time with this. It, it, it doesn't have to get done immediately. It's not like we're moving in season. We have a lot of time before the season starts. And I prefer, I mean, I prefer to get it done as soon as possible, but, you know, we, we have a long way to go. But uh, just kind of enjoying this process now. I'm going to take it slow. Let, let me ask you a QB question. I, you're the, the, the growth that you saw from Aaron leaving and, and leaving it to Jordan Love, who I, I know a little bit, uh, one of his uh, best friends has played for me at Indy and, and played at Utah State with him. Like, the maturation of him, like, did you did you see a big, huge jump? And do you, do you cater that to sitting behind a guy like Aaron? And do you think a lot of these other young QBs are being hurt by not sitting behind another guy? I think Justin Fields is going to benefit from sitting behind Russell this year. I, I or if it does happen, if he gets thrown in the fire, so be it. But if he gets the city year, I think it's only helping their maturation and growth. Did Jordan benefit from that? Did you see it? Definitely. Um, me and Jordan both got drafted in 2020 to the Packers. And um, that was kind of just like an awkward time. And I, I kind of got thrown into it with him. I mean, I, people were kind of blaming Jordan for being drafted by the Packers. And it was never, it was never his fault. It was never his decision to go to the Packers. And, right. um, you know, that played out how it did. And, um, I mean, sitting behind a Hall of Fame quarterback, I feel like can, you know, only make you better. And just another one that comes to my mind, not necessarily a Hall of Fame quarterback, is uh, the situation with uh, Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City sitting behind, I think it was Alex Smith at the Alex, time. Yeah. And, uh like who who knows what Patrick's career would have uh, turned into if he just kind of got thrown into the fire like a lot of these guys and you know it's difficult you know some of these quarterbacks come in they're like 19 20 years old um, that's tough to go in there uh, wherever city it's in whereas New York LA big franchise like Dallas like it's hard to go in there and be successful immediately um, I look at kind of what's going on with the Bears right now they're they're building a stacked roster but. They bring in who we think is going to be Caleb Williams or Jaden Daniels at LSU. It's 
it's, you know, they have the pieces there, but, you know, it takes a long time for these guys to develop. And I think that really helped Jordan a lot um, sitting behind Aaron for three years. And I think he was already mature once he was going into his fourth year starting. It was around us. We had such so like young talent. We had Mm -hmm. our oldest receivers were in their second year or, tight ends were pretty much all rookies and you know we had the veterans the offensive line and in the running back room we had two phenomenal running backs and I think once we got about halfway through the season everything just started really clicking and uh it it was awesome to see and be a part of we went on a nice little run and kind of felt like we had a shot to get the NFC championship but you know that didn't that didn't uh, work out and uh now my time's done with the Packers but I wish nothing but the best I'm excited for the future and I'll always be connected to them. They're young. They got a lot of young yeah. talent there. I mean, damn, their wideout room, I think, is as good as any young wideout room uh, in football. Let me ask you, did you have any shot at where you went uh, or any of that, or is that just a preconceived – it's a it's a done deal, your agent, them. Do you have a shot? Did you did you have any shot at, oh, I want to go here, there, or there, or, or no? You're talking about free agency, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, there's sort of – I mean, you kind of go through – I mean – I was kind of, I'd say I was kind of a mid-market guard, uh, just kind of the looks of it. And, uh, you know, the dominoes will fall how they may. Uh, some teams were uh, re-signed their guys. Like, I know Kevin Dotson got, you know, re-signed Ezra Cleveland and uh, Jacksonville. And those are some dominoes that have to fall early on just so they don't get out and, you know, test the uh, waters of free agency. And you know, there's kind of just like tears of everything, and it slowly kind of trickles down. You can see everybody agreeing the terms on, Monday during the legal tampering, and uh, once Wednesday come, that's when you can actually, you know, get signed on and everything. But you know, the way free agency works, it kind of you see everything start up top with the, you know, the high, the high value guys, and it works its way down. And I was lucky enough to find my way in there. And you know, the the bulk of free agency is done pretty much on like Wednesday, Thursday. That's when you want to get in. So um, I feel like my agent handled that really well. Um, we kind of got in exactly where we wanted to, and. Uh, other than that, like it was tough to beat uh, New York. Um, like I said, I live an hour and a half away from there. Uh, yeah. Fantastic, so it's a good, it's a good re- you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Nice. So, like, oh. Exactly. Uh, on the weekends during OTAs and mini cam, come home on the weekend, long weekend. Mm. It would be nice. I really enjoy it. For That's sure, sweet. man. For sure. I gotta ask you this. Obviously, you're a Michigan man, and, and your Wolverines won the Natty this past yeah. season. Man, had an incredible year, and now Harbaugh was in the NFL with the Chargers, I guess, just from you, you know, being, being an alum there, I guess how big of a hire, just from your point of view, you think it is the Chargers getting hardball uh, for that team, obviously with Justin Herbert, all these, these young talent there. Yeah, I, I think it's great. Um, Har- uh, Coach Harbaugh's track record everywhere he's been, he was at University of San Diego, turned him from, you know, doing nothing to you know, the winner. A winner, and uh, he did what he did. Everybody knows we did at Stanford. Uh, got to the 49ers, went to a couple NFC championships, a Super Bowl on the way. And uh, you know, I remember back in like 2020, people were you know calling for Harbaugh's job, and um, they wanted him gone. And you know, I I I didn't know who else they were going to hire. I knew they had to stick with him, and he surprisingly was able to take a pay cut and get this thing turned around and just ride it off three you know, national cha- national semifinals in a row. And eventually the third year got that national championship. And uh, it's just really awesome. And I, like, I know that he's going to carry that and sustain that with going to the Chargers. And I think everybody knew that, you know, once he got that national championship, like he wants that Lombardi trophy. I, I really know that that, uh, that Super Bowl loss to his brother – <laughs> I know, I know that sweet. <laughs> yeah, I know that stinks him, and you know, he kind of talked about that when I was at Michigan. I remember him, you know, bringing that up every now and then. And, you know, he, he kind of feels, you know, like he sits down at Thanksgiving uh, table. And that's the only thing he's thinking about. That's that's just how he's. That's just his mindset. That's just how he's. Right. Whole family. He, he, yeah, he, he, he exactly. He's just a competitor uh, all the time, yeah. and uh, he'll he'll do great up there. Uh, he's a quarterback coach. Uh, he's a head coach. He's a great offensive mind. So I know. Uh, he's going to get with Justin Herbert, and it's going to be really flawless, seamless, and I think Justin Herbert is going to have one of his best years. Mm. What do you know about Dable, Brian Dable? And, and and I know he's another guy, a great offensive mind, gets fiery, gets after it. Um, He'll drop Allen love, out a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love seeing it from a coach. That, uh, did you have conversations with him, or is that just 
agent to, to, to GM and, 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 and organization? Or did you have a chance to talk to Dable or do you don't even get to do that? No, you don't really even get to talk to him. Uh, not even up until that uh, Wednesday, the start of the new league year. And uh, everything is kind of going between agents and, you know, there's talks back and forth. And uh, But when I got to the facility, I think I went there, signed Wednesday or Thursday, you know, after physical and everything. And talking to him, I got to meet a lot of the staff and, you know, kind of went into this blind, not really knowing. Uh, there I am, like, in the car on the way up to New York, like, researching, like, who my offensive line coach is, who's the offensive coordinator. And that's just kind of how it is. You kind of get – thrown in there because obviously you know coaches coaches change all the time in the nfl so um but yeah i, I really like what he's talking about and uh he just has these like just mantra just attitude and toughness and physicality that's kind of stuff that i've really you know based my play on and really excited to go there and kind of start to build this and you know kind of as an offensive lineman we take a lot of pride and like i said like our attitude our toughness and you know how we carry the team on our backs and um, you kind of feel that, and I'm excited to you know to bring that to New York. I gotta ask you this, man, because like, so I I play I played in the MAC. I played at Ball State back in my football days. Didn't have a chance to play in the NFL, so I'm, I was always curious. How are the practices from a standpoint from college compared to NFL? Like, would you? I always hear that you know, for a lot of people, they say college was like way harder than the NFL. I want to hear from your perspective, though. You know, being a Packer for a while, being an old lineman in the trenches. How, how would you compare the two? Are, are they pretty similar, or is it, is it a big difference? Uh, I'd say it's a big difference. Uh, Ooh, okay. one, of, one of the things I got to remember the most we talk about all the time is uh, during spring ball at Michigan, we would have four-hour practices, and we're on the floor on the field for four hours. And uh, it was kind of just yeah. like a, it was, it was a, like a toughness check. And uh, some guys could do it, some guys couldn't do it, and uh, – I, I don't think in my career I ever missed one spring practice, not one rep. Um, it's tough. I mean, the first, I'd say, 45 minutes is like a walkthrough. And then, I mean, you're still on the field in your pads and your cleats for four hours long. And uh, they break it up. Uh, once we get halfway through, you get a little five, ten-minute water break. And we're, we're out there doing combine drills and full pads. And uh, it's just a fun time. Uh, but <laughs> – it really is. I kind of kind of blocked it out because you know there's just a lot of a lot of pain, toughness, and grit involved in that. But going to the NFL, um, you know, this, these are guys' jobs and their livelihood, and you know the coaches they have a responsibility, you know, to take care of us because it's also part of their job responsibility, and you know, for us to be on the field and be able to perform for us and them, you know, there's kind of connectedness between the coaches and players, and they take that seriously. So. You know, they have their practice schedule, but, you know, there's at times where coach will look at the players and be like, how are you guys feeling? What do you think about this? And we're kind of able to fine tune the practices. And uh, once we get later on the season, I mean, NFL season is pretty much like 20, to, I mean, 18 to 25 weeks. So yeah. once you get later in, pra later in the season, a few games in, this practice start toning down, it starts to get a lot more mental and, you have to be kind of a mature team to handle that because you're not getting those uh, physical reps, but you have to be able to get those mental reps and translate that over to, you know, when it comes game time. John, I appreciate you jumping on here. I got to ask you before you get out of here, like, so, you know, you got all these mock drafts, you got all these so-called pseudo gurus and all this shit that never are right. Um, <laughs> but like, so the rumors are we're, the Giants are going to draft a QB and they're not happy with Daniel Jones. I'm a Daniel Jones guy. So I like Daniel Jones. I think he could do something, but. Smitty's not. But anyway, let me ask you, like, do you even pay attention, give a shit less? or Because because trench monsters are different. I don't think people realize O-line, D-line, they're a whole different ball game. Like, they could even give a shit less. Or uh, they're like, listen, I'm going to block for whoever I block for. Yeah, we want to win. And if that quarterback, so be it. He happens to be the guy that w wins for us, so be it. But do you care who they draft, what they go after? Do you even listen to the outside noise uh, as a guy uh, – up front um or are you you kind of just all right i, I know who we, what we did what we got it, it is what it is yeah i mean i think it's hard not to see it um mm -hmm. it's kind of blown up all over social media and you know i really have no say in it and it's, it's gonna happen however it shakes out however uh you know the upper you know upstairs feels about it whether they want to go offense or defense but Whoever's back there, you know, I just hope that, you know, they can do their job and do their 111th on the field and help us out. And 
I don't care who's back there, whatever quarterback back there. Just you know, we just need to get the ball out on time, and uh, I'll be happy as offensive line. As the offensive lineman. Hey, uh, tell, people don't realize. Get it out. That's what I'd be coaching with the Q. Like, why are your ass having them block all damn day? Like, you, you know who they're blocking against? Dudes that run like four or six. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's wild the way that, you know, defensive linemen have just morphed into these super human beings. Being 280 pounds and 290 pounds and running four fours and four fives. It, are, you, it makes, are you happy <laughs> in, in your division, guys. speaking of Fletcher Cox, Probably a Hall of Famer, uh, captain of that Eagles defense. Um, you won't have to face him twice a year. And then Aaron Donald in the NFC, obviously, uh, Hall of Famer, sure ballot, first ballot guy, um, especially an undersized guy who who everyone said he could not do it and all this, and then he just dominated. I think O-linemen, are, are, is there a thing to that, or you're like, fuck, I, I wanted to go against him? Yeah. Uh- I played Fletcher once, and, you know, I grew up an Eagles fan, so it was really cool that I got to play him once. Um, now I'm in his division, so, yeah, I'm kind of happy he retired. And uh, <laughs> when I, I played played the Rams three times, and Aaron was hurt one time. So, you know, I played him twice, and, and I, that, that's enough for me. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I did like a fine enough job against him, so – is he as good as advertised? Like being like not like I was we watch we watch it, we see it, but like you actually got to feel it, you know, pause. Like like is he as good as advertised? Definitely. He he's just, he's just a different type player than what you're kind of used to. Like he's not a big guy, but he's just so like strong upper body and lower body, obviously. Like he's able to kind of just he understands weight and leverage. He's able to man, man, manipulate it so well. Use just using his hands. He doesn't have to throw his body out of whack like it's all really tight and um like he's small but he's still got a powerful brush he understands the game uh he knows where the ball is gonna go he's really smart he jumps out of gas but he puts himself in position to make plays all the time and uh i'm not i'm not gonna miss playing him in the nfc that's for sure who's your who's your biggest like i don't i hate going against this guy right now since those two are out now who's like the guy that you just like, fuck, we got to double him every time. We can't let him split the double. I got to get a hat on. Like, is there a guy or is there a guy you just hate to one out? You're, you're three techs on you. You're solo with them. You can't do shit. You get, you're not getting a double. Like, you're on the backside outside zone unless you're ripping it through his ass. Or you got to lock him up in RPO or something. Is there a guy you just like, fuck, I don't want to lock this dude up? Uh, I mean, there's obviously a couple of those guys. Uh, ones that come to my mind is uh, – Number 98, Simmons uh, from Tennessee. Oh, yeah, uh, big boy. I mean, him and Chris Jones, I feel like, are really similar players. They're both like 6'8", uh, feels like 320. And uh, obviously I'm not that. So, you know, every every snap against them, like, you can't take a playoff because if you do, they're going to expose you just, just naturally. That's just the kind of person and player they are. So, you know, you're out there. You try to keep them a level head. Don't get them too riled up. Uh yeah. Let, let let the game play out how it is, and uh, you know, ho- hopefully, you know, they're they're bound to win their battles here and there. But you just try to go out there and limit that. You know what? You just mentioned something I think is is interesting. You said try to keep them level headed. I know when like me as a, I, I used to play three technique. I I wasn't a, I wasn't a big like trash talker on the field. I would talk at, if the old lineman was starting to talk a lot. I would say something back. But I wasn't a guy that just went out there and just started trash talking. I kind of stayed calm and cool kind of you know respectful it's kind of a mind game where i'm not really pissing you off and i and it was kind of an advantage for me what, what's your style like, are you more of a trash talker in the trenches or are you a guy that's a little bit more like I, i'm gonna be nice to him in a way to where it's like kind of fucking with their minds a little bit like how, yeah. how do you describe that yeah I, w- I wouldn't say i try to go out there and be nice to him uh if anything like i, I try not to say anything but yeah. As you say something to me, like I'm going to clap back. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be the first one to speak okay. because I kind of know like mentally, if like you are the first one to speak to me, that like, that already means that like some, something's like really bothering you and mm. it, you, but you know, I'm, I'm not going to take that. I, I mean, I'm not going to be the first one to, you know, give him like, you know, the satisfaction of knowing that I'm bothered by whatever's going on. But as soon as he says something to me, like, yeah, like I'll have a clap back for him, but I'm out there. I, you know, I'm not trying to start any troubles. I'm not trying to, you know, necessarily do anything after a whistle because nowadays you can get fined for stuff like that. But you know, I'm, I'm always prepared. You, you don't. You, know, you always. You never know what's going to go on uh, out there, bottom of the piles. But you just. You always got to be ready. Yeah, I love it. I love hey, it. Hey, I just love the piles. Uh, John, man, I pre- when's the wedding? Uh, getting married in July. Oh, Ooh, July. Okay. Right around the corner. 
Yeah. Right before camp? Yeah, right before camp. Right before. Congrats, man. Uh, got to meet her. Great woman. I appreciate you uh, coming on, man. And um, congratulations on that and everything you got going on back home, closer to home. Uh, wish you guys luck this year with the Giants, man. And I'll, have, I'll be watching. I have to come out there, man. And uh, Or if you're out in the West Coast, I got to see you. I'll come out and check you out. Definitely. And uh, appreciate you coming on, man. We got to do it again. Definitely. That was a fun time. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate